Composers and creators, welcome back to another VST tutorial. I am Zach Heidi, and today we're gonna to be taking a look at Orange Tree Samples Pure Jazz Vibes. If you remember a couple weeks ago, I did a tutorial and walkthrough of their famous E electric piano, and I've got a nice little, you know, cheese and wine pairing here. We have our electric piano, now we've got the Pure Jazz Vibes. They are a staple in my personal orchestral library. I think they sound fantastic on both orchestral music and in, of course, a jazz setting. So just for a brief background on the original vibraphone that was sampled, it was a 70s Musser Sentry vibraphone, and that brand is very famously used by Gary Burton, Lionel Hampton, many other jazz vibraphone players, and the mallets that were used were Vic Firth's Gary Burton brand. So this has a very classic, if you know any of George Shearing's music or Gary Burton himself, uh, has a very classic old school vibe sound. It was recorded in Studio City, California, not too far from where I live here in Pasadena. And there's lots of features inside this particular VST that I have not found in any other vibraphone library I've used. So before I jump into the interface, let's dig in a little bit, let's play it and see how it sounds. Now you'll notice that the way that it's playing right now, it really has authenticity to the way that it decays or sustains. And that's because the current setting I have it on is the vibraphone setting. We could also change it to a keyboard setting, which plays maybe a little bit better for a traditional pianist, but doesn't have the same kind of authentic sound. I'll demonstrate that in a little bit. So going from top to bottom on this interface, we're gonna start off with the mix. This is an amazing feature, and I found this incredibly useful for different kinds of settings of this vibraphone. So we've got close, mid, and far microphones. Uh, I'll demo them out one by one so you can hear them. Here's the mids. And here's the far. They also have width control, so we can control how much we want that spread to be. And we can control a little bit of the EQs in here as well. You can also route them to different outputs if you wanted to mix that directly into our DAW. The way I typically use it is I kind of prioritize the close, I love the close mics, a little bit of the mids, and then a little bit less of the fars. So we get a sound that sounds a little bit like this. I think it's a nice balance. You can, of course, play with that. And if you wanted to, you could even automate it. And moving right along, in our play mode, this is where we get a lot of really interesting features. So this is where we can control either the vibraphone uh, performance style or switch over to the keyboard style. So you've been hearing the vibraphone style. That's where if I hold the notes, we're gonna get a staccato because that's how vibraphone would play. Now, if I put it to keyboard mode, my holds become sustains as if we put the pedal down on the vibraphone. But you'll hear we also lose a little bit of that um, release sound that we get in a true vibraphone setting. That's the keyboard. This is the vibraphone. I personally will alternate. We can also even alternate between sustains or shorts, which is something that I've done before. So sustains only. And then our shorts. That way we can kind of play between the two. We have our mute velocity, which is a very interesting uh, feature that they added. If a vibraphone player had a sustain note and wanted to dampen those notes, uh, they could put their actual mallet directly on the note, which would mute it. Uh, it would be a very subtle, quiet sound. So by default, this setting happens at a very low velocity. I'll see if I can replicate that so you can hear it. So as I play the note, Basically anything above, in this case 45, as a velocity, is going to trigger a note, and anything below that will actually mute the note, so. Now the release is slightly different. You see, it doesn't actually decay out. It kind of is just a soft end. Really subtle touch, but these are the kind of nuances that can really make or break the realism of a recording. We can change our velocity settings based on how we want it to go, our minimum and our maximum. 
Uh, so our lowest velocity by default is one and the highest is 127. We could change that if we wanted to kind of compress the velocity range. And we can also use this X, Y axis to change whether we want it to sort of lean towards the louder notes or lean towards the quiet notes. Now, I love the way that they program the tremolo in this library. We can enable or disable it, of course, but we can also control the speed and the depth, which is very useful. So I'll demonstrate that now. Here's with everything turned off on the keyboard setting. On. And here's changing the speed and the depth. So that's really useful. We can also synchronize it to our metronome or our click. And we can automate these things again. So if you right click and contact, you can do learn MIDI CC automation. That allows you to then control this parameter. So if you had like a MIDI controller where you could slide a knob, you could control this in real time as opposed to going inside the, uh, the user interface every time. And then lastly, we can change the perspective, which is a great feature. So we can go to the audience perspective, which will invert the left and right. We can choose extended or the classic range. So the standard range of vibraphone would go to this F all the way over here. We extend the range, we can get another full octave on each side. Nice if we want to kind of do some extra colors. There's a couple different tone options that we've got. We've got the as recorded version, which is just the raw. Our standard. I like that one because I think it sounds the richest. And then we have a vintage sound, which kind of has a bit of that grit that uh, maybe an older recording would have. Then we've got also an attack and envelope and release. So we can sort of imitate effects like bowed vibraphone. And if we do that effect with the tremolo, it's really, really nice color. Pretty darn cool. The release as well, so we wanted slightly longer sustains. And then we have the pedal effect, so we can change the volume of the pedal. You'll hear that a bit more as I release the pedal. And the MIDI CC that actually controls the pedal. So in by default, it's 64, but we could change that if we wanted to. And that's it. That's a basic overview of it. There's plenty of other audio examples and video demos you can check out on Orange Tree's website. So I'll leave the link for that in the description. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Leave any questions in the comments section and I will see you in the next video.